All right, hi everyone. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and go over a test two review. Um, let's go ahead and do the run. So the question here is question number one is asking me for the amplitude, the period, and the phase shift. Okay, amplitude, period, phase shift. Um, each of these values are locked in to a cosine of bx minus c plus d. So the amplitude is easy. That's our a value. That's gonna be nine. That's always a freebie. The period is you take our b value two pi over b. That's our period. And in this case, it's 2 pi over the number 6, which is pi over 3. That's pretty easy. Now, the phase shift is where almost everybody got this wrong. And I, I'm t I keep saying, C is not phase shift. C helps me find this phase shift. If C is pi over 6, the phase shift x is C over b. It's always just take C and divide it by b. So just write it, six of, uh, pi over 6 and divide it by 6. Now, that doesn't look, look, look right. Some people say, Mr. Go, that's just pi. Don't do that to yourself. Write it out. Pi over 6 divided by 6 multiplying by the reciprocal is reciprocal of 1 oh, is one over 6. That's actually pi over 36. It's an easy question to get wrong, and a lot of kids got it wrong, so they can't mess you up on their phase shift. Okay, so we're going to see this a little bit more. But the phase shift is x is equal to c over b. Please make, make note of that so you don't make that dumb mistake again. It's a simple, easy mistake to follow, fall into. Okay, the next question is asking us to look at the characteristics of the graph. So always, whenever you see these problems, look for the center. Where would the center be? If the top is 6 and the bottom is negative 4, 6 plus negative 4 equals to 2, and we divide them by 2, my midpoint is 1. And let's check, take a look here. If I write 1 here, does that look like the middle between 6 and negative 4? Count it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 spaces up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 spaces down. Yep, the amplitude is 5. We got that. And the midline is negative, sorry, not negative, it's going to be positive 1. The period is when does this graph start? If we know the midline is 1, let's go ahead and follow it out. That is half the graph. The full graph going up and down is 5. It takes us 5 to finish. We're just reading the graph, answering the question that they asked us for. The amplitude going up is 5, down is 5. The time it takes me to start and finish one graph is 5. And our, uh, was it? sorry, the midline is uh, positive one, right in the middle. So these can be really easy questions for you. Okay, now same idea. We're gonna be forced to not only write the characteristics, but then push that into an equation. So let's find out what our a, b, and in this case d is. They call it c. I call it d. I should change the prompt. I could have rewrote that that script. Okay. So if I start at zero here, we always try to start at zero if possible. <clears throat> the graph goes up here, so I'm thinking this is going to be a sine graph already. Perfect. Sine. What's the amplitude? Amplitude is 1, 2, 3 up. Double check. 1, 2, 3 down. Yep, the amplitude is 3. The d value right here is going to be 1. So I'm going to erase this actually right here. Our d value is plus 1 on the end. Plus 1. Darn it. Plus 1. And then our b value, now here's the hardest part. How long does it take me to finish one graph? If I go forward, we ran out of space. I don't know when to stop. So let's go backwards. From negative 14 to 0, that's 14 spaces. That's my period. But that is not b. If you write 14x right now, it is wrong, 100% wrong, 150% wrong. So what is my b value? We have a formula. p is equal to 2 pi over b. We're looking for b, but we have p. 14 is equal to 2 pi over b. This is legit algebra 1. We want to swap the b value. b is equal to 2 pi over 14. And that reduces to pi over 7. Our b value is pi over 7x. That's what you have to write to get this right. Amplitude again is positive 3 going up. Up 3. Are we starting at positive 1? And it takes us... Um, 14 to finish, which means it takes us, our b value has to be pi over 7. Okay, same idea. Let's go and figure out our, our center here. If this is, look, this looks like the center for us, 0, 0. Now, if it starts on top going down up, this is a cosine graph. So automatically I know this is going to be cosine. Cosine. The amplitude is positive 1. That's nice. The d value, okay, we went up. 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay, that's 3 spaces up. 
So plus 3. So we actually got half this graph done already. Honestly, we got half this graph done already. Now what's the B value? Okay, if I start, okay, up, 0, oh, we ran out of space, right? Let's go the other way. And that looks like right here. The roller coaster goes up, down, up, right? Or down, up, down, 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 and back, and back up. Darn it. So this is, from here to here, this is a period of 6. Not negative 6, because I'm just counting to the right. If I start here, it takes me 6 spaces to finish. To solve for our B value, our period is equal to 2 pi over B. I don't know what B is, but I sure do know what P is. Flip the values. B is equal to 2 pi over 6. We can rewrite this as pi over 3. Our B value, remember A cosine of Bx, our B value is pi over 3. Not impossibly hard, but you have to be... I guess a little clever, right? When you're trying to manipulate these problems to get what you want. You practice this three or four times, you're gonna get this. If you practice it once, you might forget it. Practice it three or four times. Plus, remember they have video help if you need that help. Okay, now going all the other way, they want us to graph it. And this is traumatizing for some kids, graphing it. But let's look at the characters. A is equal to negative five. B is equal to one half. Now again, if you look at all the work I'm writing, you have to write this work too. The teacher's writing the work. Why doesn't the student? Oh, I did in my head. You're a liar. Okay, C and D. C is 0, D is 0. We're going to start right here. This is a cosine graph, so we know we're going to start on top. How on top are we going to? That's going to be our amplitude. But let's go ahead and set our period first. P is equal to 2 pi over 1 half. C, B is 1 half. Multiply by the reciprocal. 2 over 1 is 4 pi. Okay, that means I'm going to stop over here 4 pi. Great. Starting, stopping, half, half, and half. So I have these characteristics kind of drawn out, some idea in my mind, uh, how long this graph has to be. Uh, negative 5, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Oh my gosh. Up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This graph normally would go up, 0, down, up here like that. But since the A value is negative, we are going to flip our graph. 0, so negative, 0 up, 0 down. So I use my dice here to... Now, let me go ahead and help you practice drawing this actually on the test. Okay, let's go ahead and, and clear this out, and we're going to go ahead and draw this on the test. Now, problem number five here. We said we were graphing a sine or cosine. This is a cosine graph, so I'm going to type this one here. This here, the first of these two, if you guys can see them blink, which is the first one because that's our cosine graph. And we said we're going to start at negative five. Okay, great, negative five. Now, I could put the other value at positive 5 up here. But if you look at this, this ends at 2 pi here. I'm not sure you're going to see this. This graph goes up, 0, up, and that's 2 pi, and that's too short. We said we have to stop all the way at 4 pi over here. So we have to force ourselves to get over there. The way we do that, negative 5 to 5. I'm going to actually drag out the second red dot here. See this? Second dot. I grab the second one up here. I'm not sure you guys can see that. But I grab the top dot. I'm going to move it over a little bit. Till we end up with a 4 pi at the very end. See that 4 pi? Okay, that's what I want. I want this 4 pi right here. So you're gonna grab this red box and you're gonna move it around, okay, till it fits right. I got too many equations going on. Negative 5 to 5. And I'm gonna drag it out so it fits. Okay, so you guys gotta practice that. Let's continue. Okay, let's work on number six. Okay, A, B, C, D. So on your work, I'm looking at your A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. We graph D to A. So we know our middle of the graph is going to be positive one. Our B value is 2 pi over B, which is 2 pi over 1, which is 2 pi. Great. That means this graph is going to start and end, start and die by 2 pi. Whoa, 2 pi is all the way at the end here. Okay, I need to go all the way out. Sure. Half, half, and half, 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 and half. Just get an idea what the graph looks like. And then my amplitude is negative 2. So negative 1, negative 2. And positive 1, positive 2. Instead of going up, we're going to go down. The graph is going to look something like this guy here. So how would you graph this? The two main points that you have to use for this type of graph is you're going to click that second graph. Put a dot.
put a big fat dot here and at here, and that will automatically give you this graph perfectly. If you look at the red dots, the red dots are the center and the first bump, where that first bump is. The first bump. Now, what if you're off by a little bit? I would still give you credit for it. Yeah, if it has that pretty good shape, you got your amplitude right, you get a lot of partial credit, if anything. A lot of partial credit. Okay. Next question, let's go ahead and look at A, B, C, D, like always. A, B, C, and D. A, B, C, D. Here's my D, here's my C. We're starting at zero. And then our period is 2 pi over 4, which is pi over 2. Here's pi over 2. So we're going to start and stop this graph. This sine graph is going to look something like that. Since it's negative, it's going to be flipped upside down. And we can do half, half, and half if you want. Now, the last part is my amplitude is negative 1.5. Negative 1.5 is up here. And if I go up, negative one, or positive 1 1.5 is up here. So sine graph starts at 0. And we're going to drop down, up, up, down. Now, what two main points you have to make sure you hit on this graph is the center and our first dot. That's how you would end up graphing this on the platform. I can't stress that you guys really got to practice other uh, these review questions before uh, we take um, the final. You want to make sure you are okay with this platform. This platform makes sense. If it hasn't clicked for you, do some more work or ask me some questions. Okay, sketch the graph of uh, this problem. Again, A, B, C, D. We just follow our A. It's really formulaic, guys. It's super formulaic. You just, it's like baking a cake. Just follow the directions. Okay. Our D value is negative 2, so we know we're going to go down 2. We're somewhere down here. We move the graph down. Um, our, we have no horizontal shift, but we do have a period. 2 pi over pi over 4. Okay, I don't like dividing fractions, so we multiply by the reciprocal that becomes 8 oh my gosh we're gonna stop way over here at 8 okay from 0 to 8 half half and half and then our a value is negative 3 so we're instead of going up we're going to go down 1 to 3 from our midline our our horizontal our vertical shift 1 2 3 down and then 1 2 3 up so we're gonna go up oh, so 0 down 0 up 0 this graph is going down because it's a negative sign graph, so we're flipped. Now, again, make sure you do graph these two dots. That's how you're going to get this graph right. Okay, let's keep on rolling. Uh, negative 2 cosine, I'm not going to do this. This one's pretty easy. Let's do the phase shift one, all right? A is equal to 2. B is equal to 1. C is equal to, careful, negative pi over 2. And D is equal to 1. Remember, it's a negative because it's bx minus c. This was bx minus c. That's a negative. Okay, you're going to graph the d is 1, so we're here. Our phase shift, uh-oh, phase shift is x equals to c over b. Make sure you do make that make that correction. So that's going to be negative pi over 2 over 1. It's nice. That says negative pi over 2. Great. So at negative pi over 2, this is where I'm going to start my graph, right here, back here. The sign graph, so I know it's going to look something like that probably. Now, how long did, does it take us to finish the graph? Uh, our b value is uh, 1, so it's p is equal to 2 pi over b, which is 2 pi over 1. That means our graph is just 2 pi long. So, who, where is 2 pi here? Uh-oh, 2 pi doesn't fit on this graph. Oh, wait, it does now because we shifted over. Now, where would 2 pi stop? We said our trick was to say add your starting value to your period and that tells you when our ending value would be so if you look at me i have to actually do the work because i don't know where it's going to stop and now i see it's going to 3 pi over 2. my stopping value is over here so i know the graph is going to somehow fit like that if you don't show me that work and you ended it there really nicely i'm going to minus some points because that's an amazing sense of deduction you got maybe you do have a great sense of deduction my Amplitude is up to 1, 2, down 1, 2. So we're going to go 0, up, 0, 
down zero. Okay. How do I know that? Well, I just did half, half, and half in my head. But half, half, and half. So make sure you hit these points. Hit that one and that one for your graph. But look, look at how much work I need to do. And I'm the professor. Okay, sketch the graph. Um, this has a phase shift to it. A is equal to 2. B is equal to 1. C is equal to pi over 4. Ne careful, it's negative pi over 4. And D is equal to 0. Okay, so D is 0. Nice. Yeah, easy. Our phase shift, though, it's 2 pi. Ne ne so darn it, what am I talking about? I'm just doing period already. My mistake. Our phase shift is x equals negative pi over 4 over 1, which is negative pi over 4. All right, so negative pi over 4. I see it. I see it right there, negative pi over 4. But when do I stop? Where do I stop along the way? Well, we're going to add our negative pi over 4 to our period. Well, what's the period? Period is 2 pi over b, which is 1. Nicely, 2 pi. So when do you stop? Uh, that's a common denominator of 4. So we're going to say 8 pi all over 4, all over 4. That's 7, uh, 7 pi over 4. Now, 7 pi over 4 would actually be right here. So that's going to be a little toughy. Up to half, half, and half. That looks about half, half, and half. So we're going to be up to, down to. Whoops, over here, down to. Okay, let's continue. Okay, sketch graph. Oh, this, th th never mind. this is exactly the same thing, pretty much. Okay, now we are at our secant, cosecant, tangent, cotangent graphs. Now, what I'm asking you guys is to, for the graph above, describe the function. Now, I'm going to go through every one of your questions, and if you can get part of this right, maybe get the amplitude right, maybe you get the secant, cosecant, cotangent, cotangent, uh, tangent, cotangent right, I'm going to give you points. Every time you get something right, I'm going to give you a partial credit here. So let's go ahead and look at some characteristics. First thing, this graph goes up here, down and up. Does that look like a sine or cosine graph? If I start at the very edge. This is going to be a cosine graph, right? And since they're finger graphs, this is going to be a secant graph. So I know already this is going to be a secant because, well, that's to say my line in my middle is 1. A sine graph would have started in the middle. But it doesn't. So we know this is a cosine graph starting on top. We can test some characteristics. The amplitude is going to be 1, 2, 3 up. And double check, 1, 2, 3 down. Yep, 3 up, 3 down. A is equal to 3. We have our D value. We said that was going to be 1 already. D is equal to 1. A phase shift is 0 because we're starting right at 0. Nice, easy. Now the hard part is the period. How long does it take me one full graph? Let's take a look here. To go from start to end, that's one full cycle. I see the period is 4. P is equal to p is equal to 4. Remember, our equation for period is 2 pi over b. Swap it. b is equal to 2 pi over 4, which is pi over 2. So our b value is pi over 2. We have everything we need to, to write the equation now. It's 3 secant bx, which is pi over 2, plus d, which is, whoops, our d value is 1. If you can do this, you're going to solve um, the cure for cancer, guys. Takes a lot of work. Takes a lot of perseverance. Takes a lot of time just staring at it. Okay. Let's continue. If this is my zero, that looks like my zero here. Okay. If I could try to connect the graphs. Since this graph is shifted, this looks like a sine graph to me. Sine graph. So the reciprocal of sine is cosecant. The amplitude is 1, 2, 3. Amplitude is 3. Um, my d value is negative 1. Because we're right here, negative 1. That's, a, that's my midline. My c value, I'm going to say, is going to be 0, no shift. And my b value is going to be the hardest part. If I go 0, up, 0, down, 0, looking here, that looks like 4. My p value is 4. If you double check here, from 1 to 5, that's a repeat. That's going to be 4 also. 2 pi over b, 
b is equal to 2 pi over 4, which is pi over 2. My b value is pi over 2. So, uh, yeah, pi over 2. So it's going to be amplitude is 3. Cosecant, my b value is pi over 2. x minus 1. It'll take a little bit of work trying to figure these out, okay? So let's take your time. Make sure uh, you do try it. The hardest part is figuring out if it's a sine or a cosine. Is it a secant cosecant graph? Take a look here. If this is my middle and I'm connecting the graph, that looks like a cosine graph to me. So bam, we know this is a cos uh, not cosine. This is a secant graph. So a lot of different characteristics we have to tell which one it is. Okay, 16 and 17. You're almost done here. Starting from 0, that looks like a what? Sine or cosine graph. And when you sin, you die. Okay, that would be 0. So that's not our graph here. My amplitude, okay, I don't know what my amplitude is because the middle of the graph looks like maybe 1. Double check. 1, 2, 3, 4 up. 1, 2, 3, 4 down. Hey, 4 up, 4 down. Amplitude is 4. Our d value then is 1. Our period, oh my goodness, how long does it, does it take me to finish the graph? It looks like it's going to be 6 pi here. So my period is 6 pi. Uh, so it goes to 2 pi over b. Uh, b is equal to 2 pi over 6 pi. Exact same moves that we did before. That's 1 over 3. Our b value is 1 over 3. We said this was going to be secant. So it's going to be 4 secant uh, 1 over 3 x plus 1. Okay, next one is just you're going to match each graph with a name. And all you do is you're just going to click this arrow on the left, and it's going to give you a list of choices. You're going to say secant, cosecant, tangent, cotangent. That's it. So you guys can probably figure that out based on what we've done before. Here's the trick here. This right here is going to be cotangent because it's not 50-50. 50-50 would have been right in the middle. That's what their joke for tangent was. So see how this is 50-50? That's going to be our tangent graph. Up, down, up. That's going to look like a cosine graph. That's secant. And up, down, up. That's going to be sine. Sorry, really fast, but let's get this done. Two more questions. Now, tangent graphs, um, you're just going to have to write the equations for it. Um, so let's look at the characteristics. It looks like we're going to stop our border here. Here we go. Take a look. That is the break of the graph. We cut half, half, and half. The amplitude is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Look, the amplitude is going to be 5 up and 5 down. A is equal to 5. Our d is equal to 0. And the tangent is the period is here. Negative pi to pi is going to be pi. And our equation is pi over b. Careful about tangent. We said tangent was pi over b. Flip it. b is equal to pi over pi. That's 1. So b is equal to 1. We have everything we need to talk about the equation. This is going to be 5 uh, tangent of bx plus 0. You can go back and watch the video how we graph tangent if you want to help you guys out here. This is cotangent. How do I know cotangent? If, well, tangent is 50 50. Cotangent just takes that full step. And what's that full step? We go from 0 to 2. Does that look like a full graph? Because we're just going to repeat again. So my period for sure is already 2. My d value, I'm going to say this is going to be 0, right? That looks like 0. If it was up here, it would look like up here. Our C value is going to be 0. We're going to start right here. Our P value is the hard part. Uh, P value helps us find our B value. That's going to be, uh, we said 2 is equal to pi over B. Careful. B is equal to pi over 2. Because I'm going to do a flip. And our A value is going to be, okay, we need to figure out the A value. But B is pi over 2. D is 0. And then C is going to be 0. And our A value is, okay, so at our quarter marks, here's my quarter marks. Let's see how far we're going to go. That looks like 3 to me. Wait, no, it looks like 4 to me. Wait, darn it, which one is it? It looks like 4. It's going to be 4. A is going to go to 4. Okay, so at the quarter mark, we're looking right there. 4, four cotangent of pi over 2x plus 0. All right, and that's our last question.